What is going on, you guys, and welcome back. So you join me in the Dodge Charger because that's the car we're modding today. And because it's blisteringly windy outside and uh, there's no way you'll be able to hear me. For some of you, that's a positive. Uh, for others, that's a negative. So in today's video, we're taking the 2013 Charger taillights and updating them with vinyl. I sound like I'm talking crazy here. But thanks to Lux Auto Concepts, we're going to be taking the 2013 Charger taillights that are cool to begin with. There's nothing really wrong with them, except for the reverse lights kind of stick out and they're kind of ugly to me. And we're going to be updating the look so that they'll look like newer Charger taillights. Now, as you guys know, with my C5 vet, I love taking cars that are not old, but have, you know, a few years on them. I guess the Corvette is old now. It is 20 years old, but the Charger here is only nine years old. But I like taking the older cars and updating them in positive ways. So like with the C5 Corvette, I put C6 Corvette wheels on them. I think it looks amazing. I put upgraded head unit and upgraded headlights and the thing's practically a next generation Corvette. Now with this here Charger, it does actually have quite a few similarities with the current generation Charger. And the taillights are very close to looking like the current generation Charger, but just not quite. So we're gonna be installing a Lux taillight vinyl kit. Now you can get this kit from Lux in a variety of different colors. You can get carbon fiber. The ones that I went with are called dark gloss black because to me that was the one I thought looked most like the current generation Charger taillights. Now some of you may be saying, oh, you're just taking old cars and trying to make them look like the new ones and they'll never be the new ones. No, I'm just updating the look. I think the taillights on this do look a bit dated and this I think updates them for the price that it costs and how easy it is to do. To me, that's a no brainer. All right, so we just did a basic cleaning on the taillights with some simple green, a heavy duty cleaner, uh, just to get the bulk of the crap off of these things. I know some of you guys are gonna point out that the uh, the paint on the back is, is really not beautiful at all. Uh, I'm aware of that. Again, for those who don't know, uh, this used to be a state trooper car. So I believe where they had the graphics and the decals and stuff, uh, I don't know if it faded differently or what, but I mean, there is a hard line right here on both sides. Um, where the paint is just is just not the same. And I've kind of come to embrace that. I kind of like the, the rough look on this. Uh, I'm not gonna try to polish the whole thing up. That'd be like polishing a turd. And I've kind of embraced that look that I'm going for a little bit of the like, a uh, little bit of the rougher, you know, patinaed look, even though this thing is a, a 2013, it's only nine years old. But next we're gonna take the cleaning supplies that Lux gives you. I believe it's just isopropyl alcohol, isopropyl. I don't know how you say it. T -t Today, Junior! So we're just gonna take that and the microfiber cloth they give you and uh, give these a final clean. You'll see that there's something, I don't know what it is. Uh, I have no idea what it is. It's just this white, it doesn't really come off, but it's been on the car since I got it. And it's never come off in all the washes that I've done. So I'm just gonna accept the fact that I'm not getting that off. But for now, we'll do the final cleaning with the isopropyl alcohol and the microfiber to get these things ready to accept the new vinyl. So now I'm just removing all of the, the letters. Uh, you have to remove the vinyl that's over them uh, so that you can put the vinyl overlay over the letters, if that makes sense. And I'm just using a little razor to do this. You just make it an edge and Comes up like so. And there goes my razor. Now I realize I probably picked the windiest day of the year to do this, uh, but it's the only day that's in the near future that's gonna be uh, above negative seven degrees. And I don't feel like waiting for the next day that it's gonna be above negative seven degrees. So we're gonna get it done. So I have the big main piece right here. And this is basically just going to go just like that. And man, I'm already excited. This is going to look good. Woo, woo. That's going to be sick. All right, I'm just going to start at one end, peel off the vinyl. Actually, what I saw in their instruction video was they peeled it back like all the way. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, like halfway. So they went to like the, the middle D and they wrapped this part and then they pulled the vinyl 
So I think that's what I'm gonna try. All right, so we got the middle section on here. I definitely needed a second set of hands, so shout out to my brother Ty uh, for coming and helping me out here. And it looks pretty good. Uh, there were a few things that I messed up that I'll explain at the end of the video, but for now, ooh, I love it. So now it's time to put the little pieces on each of the sides here. Hopefully that's a little bit easier. I don't think I'll need a second set of hands for that one. you guys what I ended up doing and uh, and where I ran into problems. First things first, can we just appreciate how good that looks? Oh, I am in love with it. Now at first glance, none of you guys are gonna notice anything wrong with the taillights uh, from afar, from even five feet. They look absolutely perfect, but I'm only human. I am not a professional wrap installer. I am a professional idiot with the camera. And I show you guys where I mess up on these projects so that, you know, you can correct it for yourself if you're a, a DIYer. And so you can learn from my mistakes. So the first place that I messed up was not doing a good enough job uh, prepping the taillight. Now, granted, this car has sat outside for a long, long time. It hasn't been washed regularly. It sat in a, a field for a year and a half before I bought it. And then it sat for another few months. And uh, if you look closely, you can see there are a few, well, right there, that's part of the plastic. I know some of you can see that. Yeah, there you go. That's actually part of the plastic right there. That's on both sides. They're just little dimples. But especially on this side, you can see a handful of little bumps. Now, when I pulled the vinyl up a little bit to see what that was, it looked like little like granules of sand or dirt. And remember, I've painted a few things in my day. I used the microfiber towel they gave me with the uh, isopropyl alcohol water mix. And uh, I thought I did a good job cleaning it. And obviously I just didn't do a good enough job. <sighs> so that's a, a f up on my end. So tip number one, if you're gonna do this, make sure you spend more time actually cleaning it. I thought I'd be in the clear using uh, simple green first and then using the isopropyl alcohol with the microfiber, but, um, but that didn't do the trick. So clean well. Now, the second place where I had a little boo-boo, yeah, you can probably see it now. Not all this, as I showed you earlier. That's, that's uh, I don't know what that is. That's just part of the car. But if you look closely in those three spots, uh, the vinyl wrinkled. It actually folded over itself, um, and I was unable to actually get those to, to come out. I used the squeegee, I applied a little bit of heat, and, uh, they fold it over and I'm not sure if there's any way to get those out. Looking up close, yeah, doesn't look great. I definitely messed that part up. It was hard to, to get these to line up perfectly. Definitely uh, get a second set of hands if you're gonna do this project. I don't know what that was, but it sounded great. Get yourself a second set of hands. Uh, that helped out immensely having my brother Tyler here to help uh, either hold it or him squeegee and I hold it. And I think if I did something differently on this end where I started, um, that I could have avoided uh, this problem with the, uh, the little wrinkles. But you know what? I still think this looks absolutely amazing. 
Now I did go over everything one final time uh, with a heat gun because uh, what I learned from watching the instructional video, I know I actually watched an instructional video, but what I learned from watching the instructional video is that when you go over it with heat, um, any bubbles will pop up that you can then squeegee out. And you also use the heat to help make sure that the corners are folded in. You do need to leave a little bit of uh, vinyl overlay on each side so you can fold it in. I'm not sure if you can uh, see that. There you go, you can kind of see it now. And you can also see the little tiny dust particles that got under my vinyl. Yeah, yeah, I don't wanna hear any comments about how dirty the car is, okay? It's winter here. I will include links down in the description below to the Lux vinyl kit that I installed on my Dodge Charger so you guys can check them out if you have a charger and wanna install vinyl. They also make kits for other vehicles as well. But I'll include links to their website and social media down in the description below so you can check them out. And a massive shout out to Lux for hooking me up with the vinyl kit and supporting this Charger project. But I will see you guys in the next one. Happy motoring.